Now that I knew the location of the drop point, I drove like a maniac to the Mill Valley Post Office. I kept my eyes peeled, but either Slade hadn't used this place as a drop point before, or he was elsewhere looking for something to kill. I didn't want to take any chances, though, so I hurried inside and found Box 969. There were two items in the post office box. A level one pass card for access into the Law & Order Party headquarters, and what had to be Slade's new orders. Unfortunately, I didn't have any way to decode them, not yet at any rate. I remembered that Sylvia had mentioned going out that night. Since I knew her name was on Slade's hit list, it might be a good idea to keep her under wraps for a while. I'm so sorry. I got so wrapped up in your story that I completely lost track of time. Well, I've been told I have that effect on women. Some sort of hypnotic power. Whatever you say, sweetie. It, it, but seriously, you know, we really have to hurry. It's not easy getting reservations at the Golden Pagoda. Well, as you know, I take the driving laws very seriously, so excessive speed is really out of the question. However, you know a shortcut. This isn't the way home. Where are you taking me? I found out some information just before I picked you up for dinner. That you're falling madly in love with me? I have reason to believe you're in the same danger your father was. Why? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm checking into it. Regardless, I'm really nervous about your safety, and I think you ought to stay at the warehouse where your father was working. But nothing's happened to me. Well, that doesn't mean nothing will. And besides, it reflects very poorly on me if my clients get bumped off during a case. Plus, I couldn't pay you if I were dead, huh? Now, that's a very good point. You're such a tough guy. Okay. I'll lay low for a few days if you want me to. But only because I don't want you to worry. Ah, there's one. Hydrant. Oh, man. There's one. Handicapped. Actually, I think you can make a case for that one. Oh, that is very funny. Ah, right there, right in front of the restaurant. Okay. Told you. Mm. Story. Well, after I took Sylvia back to the warehouse, I decided to go over the law and order party. Well, it was after midnight, so I figured nobody'd be around. I could ransack the place. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Excuse me, sir, but this premises has been secured for the evening. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave immediately. I'm late again, aren't I? Missed the whole rally. Do you have any beer left? Okay, wise guy. Get your hands up where I can see him. <laughs> Come on, I'm just having a little moment with you, okay? Is that thing loaded? In my line of work, security is no laughing matter. Let's see some ID. Hey man, I was just following orders. I was told to use this pass card to get in. We all got orders. We'll take just a second to write down this badge number. There's coffee if you like. I have to admit, I can make a mean cup of coffee.
the hell are you doing? Uh, oh, contact problem. Got it on again, though. <sighs> The coffee was spiked. I figured I should find a logical place to hide and wait for the Mickey to work its magic. Watchman was taking a nap, my first priority was to decode Slade's orders. I needed to find some kind of cipher with a lot of letters on it, and it had to be somewhere inside Law and Order. They didn't spare any expense in this bathroom. Even the graffiti is top of the line. Well, I doubt this towel's been sanitized for my protection. Now this telephone's perfect for the man who's just gotta go. I'll need to find a little something before I can open this. Oh, it's a piece of propaganda from your friends at Law & Order. It's a piece of propaganda from your friends at Law and Order. I guess Law and Order doesn't have any use for mirrors, seeing as how they're a bunch of vampires anyway. Someone around here is a heavy coffee drinker, and I'm betting it's our night watchman. Probably has to keep sipping it all night to stay awake. There must be hidden cameras in all the rooms. Uh, this could be a problem with a conscious security guard hanging around. Well, someone around here is a heavy coffee drinker, and I'm betting it's our night watchman. Probably has to keep sipping it all night to stay awake. It's the ID badge I handed to the guard. A Law and Order ID badge. This was probably left here to give Slade access into party headquarters. Though I'm guessing it might work for me just as well. coded message. I've seen this tie before. I need to find a reference document and count the letters in it. Unfortunately, I have no idea which document to use, though I'm guessing it's something related to the Law and Order Party.
Well, I guess Robert Knott isn't behind the hit list. He's on top of it. Slade's not gonna get this message, but that'll only be temporary. If I can find Knott and warn him off, maybe he'll tell me what's going on here. This door's locked. One of these offices has to be Robert Knott's. I don't need to bother with the others. This door's locked. Well, that won't work. One of these offices has to be Robert Knott's. I don't need to bother with the others. This telephone's perfect for the man who's just got to go. Oh, I don't think our friend here needs his keys for a while. At least until he's done with his nap. This door's locked. As soon as I entered Robert Knott's office, I heard the familiar beeping sound coming from a panel on the wall by the door. It was an alarm countdown. Even with the night watchman knocked out, I figured setting off an alarm would not be good. This lizard painting seems inconsistent with Knott's interior decorating motif. Maybe it's his favorite thing to skewer. Something tells me I should crack this thing. Maybe there's a clue to the combination somewhere around here. That key might be useful. Someday, I'll have a quality vid phone like this one. I wonder what's at this address. Maybe it's where Robert Knott's hiding out. Yeah, and maybe I'm the Queen of England. But I guess it'd be stupid not to check it out. These look like they just might open. Looks like Mr. Knott pulled somebody's file. Looks like Robert Knott was doing some checking up on John Klaus. Interesting. This looks like the kind of index card I keep my Cajun recipes on. This doesn't look like any name I've seen in a Rolodex. 
Maybe it's a code. I guess I should play with it a bit. Doesn't look like Nod has much use for his computer. It's not even plugged in. CD, and I'm guessing it's not the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Whatever's on this disc can't be good for the Law and Order Party. Maybe this explains why Robert Knott's on the chopping block. I'll bet Wanda would do just about anything for this little tortilla. mystery address turned out to be a seedy-looking tavern on the waterfront. Even had a condemn sign plastered across the front door. Well, you should have felt right at home. Oh, that's funny. But what happened next wasn't. Despite a clear warning from my spider sense, I walked around back and found an open door.